In this video, I'd like to talk about a radio design that was popular in the 1940s, 50s, and 60s. It was radio design that uh, did not necessitate the need for a power transformer. This is known today as the All-American 5 design. The way uh, manufacturers were able to avoid using a costly power transformer was by designing a circuit for a superheterodyne receiver that only required a small number of tubes, and the tubes were picked so that their filament voltages added up to a value just in the neighborhood of the line voltage for the United States. So here's uh, an example of the power circuit for a typical All-American 5. There's five vacuum tubes. Uh, in this case, I've uh, just listed common tubes for the different stages. So for a rectifier, the 35Z5 was, was popular. Uh, 12SA7s were popular for mixers. 12BA6s for IF amps. Uh, detectors were oftentimes 12SQ7s. And then in the final stage, you had an audio amplifier, which uh, was oftentimes a 50L6. If you add the filament voltages up there, you get 121 volts. Uh, and at the time that this design was popular, line current in the United States was uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 115, 117 volts. So you can see that, uh, that this would work very efficiently. So the problem with this is depending on the orientation of the plug when you inserted it into the wall, uh, one pin could be high versus the other pin. And so, for example, if pin one, uh, the blade, blade one of the socket was hot, then uh, when the radio was turned off, the chassis would be hot. And uh, when the radio was on, the chassis would be would be a ground potential. But if it was plugged in the other way, if blade two was hot, then when the radio was off, everything would be fine. But when the radio was turned on and switch closed, the chassis would be at 120 volts. So neither of these situations are particularly desirable because if you're working on the radio, having the chassis be at 120 volts is inherently dangerous. And in fact, it can be dangerous in everyday life. If you happen to come in contact with the chassis when the radio is on and it's hot, or in the other orientation of the plug, if the radio is off and the chassis happens to be hot, if you happen to touch that while simultaneously touching something at lower potential or at ground potential, then you can be shocked and possibly electrocuted. This is a very dangerous design. So here is one example of a 1940s All-American 5 design radio. This radio is very well packaged. It's a wooden case and uh, the back is very sealed up, as is the front and the sides. So it's hard to get your fingers inside and touch the chassis. There is a kind of a, a weakness, a danger, a hazard to this radio, and that is on the bottom side. So I'm going to turn this over. And you can see now that there are a number of metallic screws that go through the insulating wooden cabinet and screw into the metallic chassis. So if you are wondering what might happen if you're minding your own business one day, maybe you're moving something off a table that the radio is sitting on and uh, you pick the radio up, it's off, so it should be safe. You pick up the radio and touch one of these metal screws and at the same time, maybe you reach over and you touch a lamp that is made of metal, and uh, one side of that lamp is grounded. This should be safe, but as I'm about to show you, you're going to get a, a very nasty message that it isn't safe. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take our bench meter here, and we're going to touch one probe to the metallic screw. And what we're going to do is we're going to touch uh, the other probe to the handle of this oscilloscope, which is plugged in, and the case of this oscilloscope uh, is grounded uh, through the power line. And what we see on the voltmeter is uh, 120 volts. So if you did this, uh, you would be in for a very nasty surprise, and potentially uh, you could potentially die from this. By the same token, if you were... Uh, working on this and you had the chassis out of the wooden cabinet uh, and you didn't realize that the chassis was hot uh, and maybe you went to probe it with your oscilloscope. Uh, imagine plugging in the ground side of an oscilloscope probe to the chassis and it's a direct short to ground. So you've just destroyed uh, at least your oscilloscope probe, maybe damaged the uh, oscilloscope circuitry 
uh, or, uh, or damaged yourself by getting shocked. So what can we do about this? One way to make this design safer is to rewire the power using a modern day polarized power plug and by placing the on off switch on the hot lead uh, coming into the radio. So you can see in this case if the radio is off and the switch is open then the 120 volts never makes it past the on off switch and if the switch is closed and set is on then the potential is uh, of the chassis is at uh, ground potential, so it's at zero volts. And this radio is much, much safer. There's a problem, though, that I want to point out, and this is not a problem of designing uh, safety into a restored radio. It's a problem with buying restored radios and not checking them out, which is that oftentimes when you buy uh, radios that are vintage, and they're advertised as restored. Maybe they've had all the capacitors replaced and uh, drifted resistors replaced. Sometimes uh, they'll be advertised as including a new polarized power cord. The implication is that this radio is, is now safe. You should never repeat, never trust such a statement, and I'll show you why. Here's an example of an All-American 5 design. This is a radio that was purchased, restored. This unit dates from the 1940s, I believe. When it was purchased, there was a claim that the power cord had been replaced with a modern cord, and that the cord was polarized, and therefore the radio was safe to operate. So this is indeed a modern cord. You can see that this blade is thinner than this blade. Uh, so this will fit into an outlet in only one orientation. So let's see if this radio is in fact safe to operate and work on. Here we've turned the radio around so that the uh, exposed back side of the radio is uh, in plain view. You can see that it's possible to get into the chassis quite inadvertently, uh, quite accidentally. So that's one thing to be aware of. The radio is turned off at the moment and plugged into the mains outlet. So let's see if I uh, touched the back part of the chassis and simultaneously touched with my meter probe. Uh, an appliance or uh, an object that was grounded. In this case, I'm going to use the handle of my oscilloscope, which is turned off. And you can see up here by the meter, which is set to AC, that I'm not picking up any line voltage. So this is a very good sign. Let's see if that is still the case when I reach around the front and turn the radio on. So I'm going to now touch the chassis with one probe and the grounded oscilloscope handle with the other. And you can see that, that in fact I'm reading line voltage. I'm reading 121 volts AC. So if one were to inadvertently reach behind the radio when it was on and touch the metallic chassis, or if a volume knob or a, a tuning knob happened to fall off and you grabbed a hold of the shaft, the tuning shaft, while simultaneously maybe touching an appliance or a lamp, for example, that happened to be grounded, you could get a very nasty shock. And in fact, that shock could be lethal. This is dangerous in another way. In addition to being dangerous to somebody that maybe had received this antique radio as a gift, uh, and maybe they aren't knowledgeable about electronics and don't realize the hazards of this old design. Uh, it's also dangerous to work on if you are a radio restorer uh, or someone teaching yourself about radio electronics. This is uh, something that if you put it up on your bench, plugged it in, and then just grabbed an oscilloscope probe and connected the ground lead of the probe to the chassis with the intent of tracing the signal through the different stages of the superheterodyne, you would be in for a very nasty surprise as well. You would at the very least blow out your probe cable, very likely damage the circuitry of your oscilloscope, and more importantly, you could damage yourself. So how do we work on a piece of equipment like this safely? One way to make it safer is to use an object called an isolation transformer. 
So this is an isolation transformer. This is a very simple unit. The thing that makes it an isolation transformer is that the secondary side is completely isolated. It has no contact with the primary side. What that means is, is that the reference to ground is removed from the secondary side of the isolation transformer. So we can demonstrate that here. The isolation transformer, uh, uh, this is the primary side. It is plugged into the wall. Here's the secondary side and the radio plug. And what I'm going to do here is just move the camera a bit. And we're going to do exactly the same thing that we did before. We're going to touch the chassis. And we're going to touch something that is grounded. In this case, the oscilloscope uh, handle. And you see I do not get 120 volts. What I do get on this uh, meter is 9 volts AC. And 9 volts is not 120 volts. So in that sense, it's safer. Uh, but you might wonder why I get any reading at all. This reading is uh, what's called a ghost voltage, and it's not real. It is due to current that is coupled in to the stray capacitance of my probe cables and other parts of the circuit that, uh, that are connected to the probes. The important thing about ghost voltage is that they uh, do not carry significant current. And in fact, you can make them disappear by using a multimeter that has a low impedance uh, setting. Uh, some models of multimeters have a low Z setting. Uh, or by using a meter that is itself very low impedance, like an old VOM. If I were to measure this with an, an old triplet VOM that I've got, which has a 10 kiloohm per volt sensitivity, it wouldn't budge at all. It would show a reading of zero volts. So when you're working on a piece of antique equipment that does not have a power transformer in it, you are well advised to power that equipment not from the mains, but through an isolation transformer. And if you do that, it is much safer to operate on that equipment because the potential of touching something that's hot and touching something that is at ground is effectively removed. This is one All-American 5 radio that's been restored and used as a demonstration. But I've noticed over the years that it's been true for other restored radios as well. The key point here is to never trust anything advertised as safe just because a polarized power cord has been installed. Another takeaway point is to use care when working on old radios, and that includes using an isolation transformer because it could save your life and it can also save your equipment. Of course, working on anything with 120 volts is dangerous, and you do so at your own risk. While an isolation transformer is a way of making it safer, you still have to pay attention so that you don't receive a potentially lethal shock. One final point. Not all isolation transformers provide isolation, as we've talked about in this video. Some units are sold and designed to isolate or suppress electrical noise on the power line. And in doing so, they carry through the ground reference to the secondary side of the transformer. Such a transformer will not protect you unless it's modified. There are other excellent videos that explain more about isolation transformers, and I'll link a couple in below. I strongly urge you to view these videos as well. They've got lots of information. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave comments. Thank you for watching.